Hello everyone, this is Max Power for the Meat Lovers channel once again. And we are watching another game of StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. Uh, this time down here on Neoplanet S, we have Rikia in the bottom left corner, and in the top right corner we have Voodoo Grand, the channel owner. Now, this cast is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to, um, for a number of reasons. First of all, if you've heard any of the other casts, uh, you will know that my voice is sounding hopefully better. <laughs> the old microphone I used to use was a, a kind of a piece of crap, and um, it was kind of a... I'd call it a bug in StarCraft 2, that um, if you don't change the microphone volume, it has a tendency to do that for you when you start a game or start the game. And mine was set to 100%, so it would max out my microphone and make for some really bad casts. And really blow out my own voice and make it sound awful, so now I have something new. And I have fixed the issue, and uh, it should all be good. So, this is a different cast for a lot of reasons, not just the new microphone. Uh, and hopefully the better balanced audio and some of the other stuff I've been working on. Um, this is actually a pretty good game. Like, I know for the most part I cast games and I make fun of these guys, because, you know, they're worthy of ridicule um, for their play most of the time, but this is uh, better. And um, I won't tell you too much about it right now, but for now, as you've probably noticed, this is a, a Terran versus Protoss. Now, uh, Rikia is obviously a Protoss player. If you've seen him before, that's what that's his main race that he plays, and has been since pretty much the start. He played with Terran for a couple of matches, but he's been Protoss ever since. And um, Voodoo has just recently changed to Terran, um, sort of because there were too many Protoss players around and he just started out. He's, he sort of has this, I think it was kind of a, a dream and aspiration as opposed to become a better player and become good at Terran. Because it is a cool race to be good at. There are a lot of cool harass options and stuff like that that's rather enjoyable. So um, it's a cool way to play. Now, uh, Rike here is going for what looks like a gateway expand. He has quite a few minerals, so his, uh, his timings are a bit off. Um, partially due to his uh, missing chrono boosts, I think, but also just generally just sort of bad timings. I mean, you wanna you wanna fix stuff like that. Um, you have a Varus expand, so this is all sort of pretty standard. Uh, Voodoo kind of rolling the same strategy over and over um, for the sake of learning. Uh, it's something I, I recommend a lot of new players do um, because it, it really helps their play. Because uh, with Terran especially, you can pretty much grow the same strategy in all the three different matchups and be alright at the lower levels. Um, not so much with Protoss, because you have to do walling and everything that's sort of only against Zerg and stuff like that. And, you know, any kind of walling against the Terran or uh, another Protoss player is often a bad idea. Um, especially against Terran. So, here we have uh, Rikia. Another one of these problems. Rikia has a tendency to do this. I know that I said this was going to be a good game, but I'm still going to point out some of the small mistakes. This pylon never place this pylon up front uh, against a Terran player. You want to place it up here or here to uh, secure it, because you need it for reinforcements, and they're just going to kill it if it's right here. So yeah, um, the Marine is running in and getting destroyed by these this Zealot um, due to no micro. So yeah, um, let's see what's going on up here by a Voodoo space. He's going for another barracks. It's a pretty normal Voodoo play, so he's basically um, getting his gas a little bit late, getting his, his command center up, building up a couple of marines and then expanding, which is a good choice. Uh, the only problem is he doesn't have a barracks going down, er, a bunker going down, sorry. Uh, the bunker is incredibly important. Uh, yeah, don't do this. But yeah, you can see that uh, Rig is getting ready to get a little bit aggressive. He's getting more gateways. He has a uh, settled in a stalker up here. Uh, he should probably be moving out and see if he, seeing if he could uh, secure a forward pylon at this point. But uh, let me just um, tell you this. This is the first time Ricky has ever done anything like this. This is a mass gateway attack. I think he actually goes for seven gateways um, on, on only one gas. This is typically a, a Zerg strategy, but it's something that Ricky wanted to try out. I, to I told him that he was um, he was being too conservative in his games and, uh, and sort of sitting back and being too afraid of of nothing, because he doesn't normally scout anything. So I told him, you know, how about you just, um... That's actually me pinging, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I was observing this game um, when it was being played. So yeah, that's what he's going for. He's basically, uh, he's taking my advice to heart, which is a good thing. Take my advice to heart. And um, yeah, he's just building up a lot of uh, workers and going for this big, big attack. And... 
his timings aren't great, he's fucking up some stuff, but this could end up being really deadly. Because um, Voodoo only has two barracks at this point, and he's going for upgrades, at least in theory he's going for upgrades. Also the uh, pro move of leaving this uh, SCV out. <laughs> so, a lot of stuff uh, is not going great for Voodoo right now. He has a ton of minerals, he's not throwing down his additional barracks at this point. This is a, a big early game Terran mistake. Uh, a lot of Terrans can go this far, but once you're dropping these four mules, you're going to have so much money, you really want to hurry up and throw down some extra barracks or something to spend all that money. Uh, or an extra command center. At this point, it would probably be a, a big mistake to throw down an extra command center. Um, but again, without any scouting, he doesn't know that what he gets going for is this 7 gate attack. Oddly, he's going for this Twilight Council, sort of a... I think it's a fallback strategy. I, I asked Rikia after the game, and I think that was sort of his idea, was that he doesn't have any tech off of this, and all he can build are sentries and sell it and stalkers, so he would need some kind of upgrades in that case. I think it's a little bit early, um, considering he hasn't actually attacked the enemy, um, to sort of go for stuff like this, but look at Rikia's money. I, it would have skyrocketed at this point. Okay, this is a mistake. Um, you really want to look out for stuff like this. Um, where are you moving your units? How are you doing it? But, see, this is pretty scary. This is half Rikia's army, and he's decimating everything Voodoo has. I mean, Voodoo at this point has not gotten combat shields or yeah, really anything that's being built right now. So, he's way too late on this one. And he saw some of the army. But crucially, ironically, due to uh, Rikia's mistake, he actually didn't know there were a lot more units coming. Um, it, this is a sizable attack, even though it's sort of late. And Rikia, while he's sort of having a little bit of a hard time spending his money right now, this is a scary attack um, to hold for a, for a Terran player, a fairly new Terran player. Because you can, as you can tell, obviously Voodoo could spend his money on barracks and he would be, probably be fine. But this is a scary attack. Like, refine this a little bit, and you can do some serious damage with this. I mean, Rikia's sort of preparing for a tournament we're going to have uh, with these players a little bit later. And what's interesting about the strategy is, if he refines a little bit, I don't think there are a lot of people who could hold this. Um, be they Protoss, or be they Zerg, or be they Terran. Even though this is generally a strategy you would think of as being best against um, a Zerg player. In the lower leagues, I don't think that matters nearly as much. This is powerful. And it doesn't require a lot of, yeah, it doesn't require a lot of a lot to do, uh, although the forward pylon is essential. This is a really good first try of the strategy, and I was, I was incredibly surprised because I was thinking these players were fairly even. Um, I had no idea that they could run in and do something like something like this. Um, on his first try as well. And look, he's expanding on the back of this, he's getting more gateways, he's getting charge. Like, he's not resting on his lords, he's got this enemy down. But even though that's happening, he's not hes not just going to sit back and wait for his stalkers to kill this. He's going to warp in more units, he's going to get upgrades, he's going to get more stuff. So that if anything weird happens, or widow mines or whatever, I mean, he's up against a, an opponent with a lot of money. And, um, like, yeah, Maybe he's he knows that it's kind of weird. Like this guy had two bases and a ton of mules and uh, somehow uh, a lot of resources are missing. As it turns out, they're just in the bank, but they could be somewhere else. So yeah, Rikia is actually being pretty decent about spending his money, although he has a tendency to like to warp in stalkers. Um, but yeah, this is very very good, very very good. This is incredibly solid, and um, it just shows kind of. Don't be afraid in StarCraft, because fear is what's going to kill you. See, you, Voodoo. gg out. He is basically dead at this point. And there goes the game. Um, this is my replay, and as you can see, I haven't left. Uh, it took me a little bit. I was uh, I was floored by this game, because this is not the Rikia you normally see. I mean, he's the, the kind of guy who'll sit back on, on a base and get a couple of gateways, and then he'll maybe take an expand when he feels safe, and he'll die horribly to any player that macros a lot and just skips everything because he doesn't scout. I mean, he has units and the capability to go and harass, but he doesn't do it. 
So what's great about a strategy like this, just a crazy gateway all in or something like that, is that it sort of takes you out of your comfort zone and, and as a new player and gets you used to sort of the attacking um, and trying to be more aggressive and, and seeing what your opponent does and maybe getting more of a realistic view because the problem is, uh, what happens to a lot of lower league players is that they'll sit back and they'll do that and then they'll get completely crushed because they're up against a player sometimes that's just going to macro, it's just going to exploit this sort of defensive style um, that isn't very economical, very or doesn't have a lot of big tech advantages. It really doesn't have a lot of advantages against anything but an attack, and if you don't attack, well then, nothing really happens. So, I would recommend something like this. Um, especially two, uh, two base attacks are very, very good. Um, and then just try to refine the build. Uh, try to make sure you have fewer minerals around. Um, timing your gateways, getting your expand up, I remember to building workers, you know, stuff like that. And just try to go as effective as possible. Just stop at 16 workers at each mineral line and maybe a, a gas or two gas. And then go for, a, go for an attack. And then see how quickly you can do it. Because that's really the strength of it. You want to hit quickly. And then you, uh, you want to have a reinforcing pylon or rally your barracks up front or whatever you're doing. So yeah, this is a, a really cool example build from sort of a lower league player uh, doing something that's very much out of his comfort zone and, and having some success with it. So uh, I highly recommend it. Um, go try it out. I've been Max Power for the Meat Lovers channel, and um, I hope you like the new audio. Bye.